Great. So now we're going to talk about other effects that are available in the Roadcaster Pro. And this, these are effects, by the way, this is knowledge that you guys can use across every mixer. This is knowledge that you can use across every uh, effects platform that uh, is out there. Okay, so this is not just Roadcaster Pro knowledge. This is audio knowledge that you can use anytime, anywhere, software based, hardware based, you guys name it. Okay, uh, so welcome everybody who's joining. If you're in, if you're enjoying this education on audio, feel free to follow me to educate you guys better on audio, on video, on lighting, you name it. And so here today, I'm just educating you guys on audio to teach you how to have a better sound when you're broadcasting and when you're doing live streams and when you're doing your podcast. Sound good? Beautiful. All right, so the next filter that we're going to learn how to use is called noise gate. So a noise gate filter is available built in to the Rodecaster Pro mixer and it allows you to eliminate primarily room noise. So if you have a fan, which I do, if you have air conditioning, which I do, I live next to an airport, literally. I have kids, I have a wife, people are mowing their lawn, you name it. You are going to want to use a noise gate to eliminate unnecessary background noise wherever you are. And so that is available right here in the Rodecaster Pro mixer, physically in the mixer, and I will show you how to do it digitally through the software as well. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to select your microphone minus one. So hit that. Then when you arrive in these menus, you're going to go to audio processing. Click that. Then right here, you're going to see noise gate. Click noise gate. And here you will basically see uh, where the threshold is for how noisy your audio is and whether you need to turn down or up your thresholds for audio in order to eliminate background noise. Now, how do you know how much background noise there is? It's a really tough question, right? So one, what I recommend doing is disabling the noise gate, and I recommend going back to your levels right here, and then looking at the levels right here with no noise gate on. Check it out and just look at how much background noise there is. You'll see it right here on these levels. Check it out. As you can see, there's a relatively low amount of background noise through this microphone because I have the high pass filter on. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at these menus and you're just gonna be quiet and you're just gonna let your microphone pick up whatever background noise there is in the room. Watch. So you see how the levels are kinda popping around 60 down there? So around 60 or so is where we're going to want our noise gate to be. and if that's where we put it, we're going to be minimizing the amount of effect that we're having on the audio and maximizing the uh, impact of a noise gate to eliminate background noise, but not eliminating our own audio. We do not want to eliminate our own audio. So now that we know it's around 60, that's called your noise floor, by the way, go to audio processing, noise gate, and what you're gonna do with noise gate, you can enable it, but for our threshold here, it's at 52. We can actually turn our threshold down to more like 55. Now, hold on a second. Just a moment ago, when we were looking at our levels, it was at 60. So why would I have our threshold down at 55? Here's what I recommend. Whatever your noise floor is, when you go and look and see how much background noise there is under your levels a moment ago, let's say your floor is 60, negative 60 dB, you want to put your noise gate five decibels, five dB above that. So in case it gets a little louder, in case that fan cranks up a little bit more, in case the air conditioning turns up a little more, in case that lawnmower gets a little bit closer to your window, whatever it may be, you have a little wiggle room with your noise gate to make sure that this pulls out background noise from your audio that you don't want. Cool? Beautiful. And so that's exactly what we did here. If negative 60 was my sound floor, I move my threshold five decibels above that to negative 55 and change dB. Got it? Got it. There are some other settings here when it comes to learning about noise gates. There's attack, 
hold, release, and range. Those are all very precise items. So I'm going to adjust them in the software side right now so you can check those out over here, okay? And so here is the software version of the Rodecaster Pro. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go right over here, click this button in your Rodecaster Pro software, go to Effects Editor, and it will pop open this screen. You're going to select your microphone, mine is microphone number one, and then you're going to go down to Noise Gate. Here, we've already set our threshold in this demo, but you can adjust the threshold here. And what does attack mean? This tells you how aggressively, essentially, it removes background noise. So the lower the attack, the faster it cuts off the background noise, and the higher the attack, the slower it cuts off the background noise. And so if, let's say there are sudden background noises in your background, people clapping, a baby suddenly crying, a dog barking, whatever it may be, you're gonna want your attack to be lower in that scenario. Why? Why do you want your attack to be lower? Because you want it to eliminate that background noise faster because there's just gonna be a sudden loud noise. Make sense? If you're in, in a space that doesn't have necessarily sudden loud noises and what have you, then you're going to want to um, use a different strategy. And that other strategy is going to be uh, having the attack be higher in that scenario. And so if your attack is higher, that means that it's going to slowly fade out, more slowly fade out the background noise so that you're there as opposed to suddenly cutting it off when your, high, when your noise gate kicks in. Got it? Got it. So in my space, I don't have babies suddenly jumping out of nowhere or dogs suddenly jumping out of nowhere. So I'm gonna turn up my attack up to a much higher level actually. I don't need a low attack. Then you can do hold. So what does hold mean? So hold when it comes to noise gate is the setting where how long it's going to hold your audio before it turns the noise gate on or off, right? Same thing with release. So it's gonna hold your audio in place before it goes away for a certain amount of time. Then it's going to release your audio at a certain amount of time. And so I recommend leaving these at default to start with. There's no reason uh, to, there's no reason to go from there, okay? Awesome. Range is the amount of uh, basically uh, decibels that it's going to apply the noise gate filter to. And so you do not need to adjust this setting necessarily, but if you want to, you can change your range so that uh, basically there's a wider range if you want uh, that the noise gate will apply its effect to, uh, but I don't recommend uh, changing that setting uh, unless you are knowledgeable of what your range of noise could be when you're measuring your noise in your background, okay? So the most important two settings to keep in mind are Threshold, dropping your threshold down to five decibels within where your sound floor is, check. Attack, if you have sudden loud noises, drop your attack down. If you have lot like slow loud noises coming in, like air conditioning or whatever, then turn it up. So you have a smoother noise gate experience and you'll be in better shape uh, whenever the noise gate kicks in or kick turns off. Got it? Great. So that is noise gate, and those are the important effects and important elements of noise gate that you need to understand. Awesome.